Cold front. At warm front, I was qualified and had knowledge in abundance. So they left me to do my thing, but then made me redundant. I got about two grand redundancy when warm front let me go. It's a shame because it was easy, so it kind of was a blow. I decided to have some chill out time and smoked a lot of weed. But when my money had all gone, thought a new job I'm going to need. Southern Electric. Jason had appeared in a puff of smoke, like a magic genie out a lamp. I'll get you a job at Southern Electric, you naughty little scamp. So I thought I might as well, because at least it was employment. But Southern had some rules in place, which were there to limit my enjoyment. For one thing, the boss there knew the score. He knew most his staff were dodgy. I got put in Lee's knocking team. Lee was sound, but rather podgy. Plus, we had to get our deals verified by phone. And we had to get five deals a day or our boss would moan. So all in all, I weren't that glad to be part of the Southern setup, especially as 7 o'clock a.m. was now the time I had to get up for the Southern Electric meetings that I attended every morning. I thought maybe I should just fuck off without even giving them a warning. But I didn't. I stuck it out because I needed the fucking money. Although I probably would have jacked it in if I hadn't found my team so funny. Ginger Dan and the Blunts. Whilst working for Southern Electric, me and Dan went for a hunt. Not for packs of Rizzler, but for something called a Blunt. We found a shop that sold them and packed one full of weed. I have to say that smoking Blunts gets you very stoned indeed. Ben's in Sweden. A point I think I may have forgot is about my buddy Ben. He no longer lives in Maidstone because he has moved again. This time it is to Sweden to live with his girlfriend Kat. A move of complete genius for which I must take off my hat. The Ann Summers order. I like a vibrating rubber cock ring and a butt bandit as well. A pair of fucking nipple clamps and a tube of pussy gel. A fucking sexy outfit to look like an air hostess. The Ann Summers lady asked, is this all for you? To which Chompy answered, yes. Dirty Pam. Chompy had a lovely mum. Her name is Dirty Pam. I reckon she's seen more action than fucking Vietnam. Dirty Mel. Chompy has a sister. Her name is Dirty Mel. Not only is she really fit, she pole dances as well. Way of the Chomp. I used to like it when Chomps pecked me. She pecked me on the cheek. She would use her nose to peck with, as if it were a beak. The Chomp Assist. I wish you hadn't took that E. You should have just got pissed, I thought, as Lucy's head spun round like the exorcist. Tony, Tony, Tone. Chumps had dropped a bombshell. She was going to go on holiday to Tenerife. A relationship-killing decision for which I gave her lots of grief. But I don't believe in getting mad. I believe in getting even. If I fuck another girl, I thought, I won't care about Chumps leaving. And whilst knocking doors, I found that girl. She was a single mum called Tony. She had texted me after I'd signed her up to make sure I weren't a phony. But the text also said if I went round her flat, she would make it worth my while. Deep down, I really did love chumps, but was happier in denial. So I had some drinks with Tony the mum and went back to hers for sex, where her babysitter and best friend turned out to be Trev's ex. That's the trouble with where I live. Everyone knows what you were doing, which in this case was seeing Tony, who later I'd be screwing. And screw we did, much like, in fact, Black and Decker power tools. I cheated on Chomps a second time, but it was she that broke the rules. She was the one who sacrificed our relationship to go away. So I thought, fuck that chumpy ho, because at the end of the day, I knew she'd fuck at least one lad or maybe two or three. And I weren't about to let that bitch make a victim out of me. As for Tony, well, I fucked her again, but the second time weren't as good. So I stopped seeing Tony the mum, although perhaps I never should. Because all I did was go back to Chomp, as Chomps was better looking. Plus, by now, she had promised to cancel the fucking booking of her flight to Tenerife. But it turned out Chompy lied. The flight was never cancelled. Chomps hadn't even so much as tried. So despite all my best efforts, she decided she'd still go. I was starting to not like so much. This little fucking hoe. 
Yes, Chumps was quite young, I suppose I'd have to say, and there was not much else I could do to stop her holiday. <sighs> if you go abroad with your mates, our love just won't be the same. I won't trust you, you won't trust me. That's just some reasons I could name. But with her sister, she did go on holiday abroad with her slutty little friends to fly off by Concord. Never mind, I thought life goes on. I won't let it get me down. I'll just sit back and smoke a joint in my dressing gown. If I really put my mind to it, I can get her out my brain. Fuck all this stupid loved up shit. I'll be single once again. <laughs>